Hello, I'm Rob Cartmel from ProTrust Consulting, and this is a short video uh, to provide some guidance for executors and administrators of an estate. And uh, I hope this will be a useful summary of the roles and duties that are involved with um, that responsible position. So let me uh, share my screen and we can just take you through a few aspects of it. Um, estate administration is one of our uh, areas of work, um, one of our primary services. So part of my main role is to help executors discharge their responsibilities and to ensure that an estate is efficiently and effectively administered. And let's just run through a few uh, aspects of executorship. Um, the role is uh, a detailed one. Um, an executor um, of a will has legal control over the probate process. Probate involves the administration of the terms of a will and carrying out the wishes of the testator, who's the person who made the will. Uh, if there is no will, you've got something called an intestacy, and the laws of intestacy then apply, uh, which is a set priority uh, order as to the right for someone to um, receive and benefit from the estate, usually uh, alongside, uh, in accordance with the family tree, for example, of the person who died, um, the uh, person applying for the grant of administration, letters of administration, will normally be the next of kin or one of the categories of next of kin, and they're called administrators rather than executors. Um, combined as a term, the executor or administrator, they are called or known as the personal representative, and that can also um, be an authorised person, uh, such as an attorney applicant. So often I'm an attorney applicant for people uh, so that I can discharge their responsibilities um, and often in a more efficient way, uh, rather than having to have all of their signatures to all documents, I can uh, do so on their behalf. So that's often a, a normal course um, in our firm for administering uh, and helping executives administering estates. So that person in that example would be the personal representative. So if you hear of the term personal representative, it can mean either an executor of the will, an administrator where there's an attestacy, or someone appointed as an attorney to act for either of them. So let's have a look through some of the duties and responsibilities. Um, there is a commonality to most estates, but each trust and estate administration is different in its nature and circumstance. I suppose that primarily is because we are still dealing with people and individuals. So um, their assets may be similar to other people's assets, but the family circumstances and characteristics of the family are always different. Um, but the process is relatively straightforward in terms of being able to set out sort of a start to a finish. Um, the first port of call is to obtain the last will and testament and conducting a search to ascertain if a will exists or a later will. And of course, the terms of the will need to be reviewed, um, particularly uh, if there are any trusts that might in, in involve some extra advice and responsibility of understanding. Um, it's, it's not so common to organise a reading of a will, um, but certainly to notify all relevant parties certainly co-executors initially, and probably good advice to be transparent in the process is to involve uh, all important beneficiaries uh, at the earliest stage, and indeed uh, any established and well-known creditors, and setting out the plans for uh, the smooth operation of the administration. So once you've got established as to who your uh, beneficiaries are, the executors are, who's going to take the uh, the job up of administering, um, the next stage will be to ensure an accurate valuation is obtained for the estate assets. Um, valuing, I've mentioned their joint property, um, that's an important aspect as to whether how joint property is dealt with. If, if you've got tenants in common property, then that share of the deceased's joint ownership is passing through the will or intestacy. And if it's joint tenants, which is the other style of joint ownership, that will pass automatically to the surviving joint owner outside of the will. So 
that will be something to uh, consider and understand, uh, take advice on uh, as part of valuing property and assets is making sure what assets are in the estate at the, in the first instance. Similarly, pensions are generally outside the estate. Life policies might be inside or outside, depending on whether they're written in trust or there are nominations. So those steps require a little bit of understanding and advice in most cases. Similarly, with estate assets, you then have to value the estate debts and liabilities. And the purpose of that is to help uh, file an inheritance tax return to declare what the gross estate is, um, everything added up in value and the liabilities and debts come off. Um, but those are debts as at the date of death, but including funeral expenses. Anything post death other than funeral expenses um, and ancillary funeral expenses are not counted as debts for inheritance tax. So yeah, they form the basis of the tax return. And then the next stage for executors to be responsible for is the preparation of an inheritance tax return or an account if it's filed um, for lower value estates, um, uh, an internet uh, online checker. Um, tax is payable generally over 325,000 of assets at a rate of 40%. But there are other allowances very important for executors to un to at least make sure someone is delegated with the responsibility of checking those allowances. You have something called the residence nil rate ban that usually for families will add £175,000 of extra tax allowance, totaling £500,000 per individual. Uh, there are certain circumstances and parameters for claiming that relief. So understanding that process is an important factor and executors have to be sure that someone responsible is dealing with that process. Generally, um, tax must be paid upon applying for probate or at the point of applying for probate. So before probate, which is the official certificate of entitlement for executors to, to be able to administer the assets, you may need to apply to banks and building societies and investment holdings to get tax paid before probate. Um, and then the probate papers comply, comprise an application to the court, to the uh, division of the court called the District Probate Registry. Um, and we generally organise people to file at, uh, um, at Oxford or, or Newcastle uh, registries. They seem to be the most efficient as far as we, we believe. Um, once the application is completed, it seems to be taking at the moment three to four months to come back from the probate registry um, with a, a certificate, a sealed document called a grant of probate or a letters of administration where there is no will or where there's an attorneyship. Um, yeah, it says here in the note that the grant is a, a ticket or a certificate for the executors to then collect in the assets, sell or transfer property and to pay off the estate debts. Without the grant, the executors may only have very limited powers uh, to deal with some small assets um, as they do not have the registration of their legal uh, authority conferred from the will. Um, then there's the process in the state administration of uh, ensuring that all assets are accounted for, that they're dealt with according to the reasonable instructions of the beneficiaries, the primary beneficiaries, and therefore a process of consulting with them is really important. And that is a big part of our role is, is, is liaising and making sure that all the beneficiaries who um, have an impact on uh, the receipt of those uh, assets have the opportunity of giving their instructions and wishes as to whether, say, a certain asset or proportion of it is transferred to them. So we've got a case at the moment where the deceased had a, a large quantity of, of shares in one particular company and um, his whole family generations have held shares in this company. And the wishes are of the of one or two of the three beneficiaries that, that that continues as far as they're concerned, but the third one wants their share cashed in. So getting correct instructions before then acting on them is absolutely essential. Um, part of that process then will be preparing a set of estate accounts, um, quantifying and detailing all the assets in the estate and all the liabilities, not only the probate values, but then the final values of when they're transferred to beneficiaries or in cash. 
dealing with income tax is also a requirement. There will be a closing off period as at the date of death um, from the previous tax year, from the 6th of April. So that will be something to be looked at. There may be a requirement to file a tax return for the estate administration period. Usually that's not the case unless you've got rental properties, which uh, is still receiving rent to the estate without tax being deducted. Um, so that is a, pro uh, a process that needs careful checking uh, to ensure that the estate deceased records are closed off at the date of death and any administration period is dealt with correctly. So once all of the Alice assets and liabilities are paid off and, and transferred uh, or in cash, then the estate accounts confirm all of those details and then confirm the sums to be paid to beneficiaries. There may well have been some interim payment requests from beneficiaries. So if there's a long delay for some period, uh, for some reason or other, for example, waiting on the sale of a property, then it's common and good practice to uh, offer to to make interim payments to beneficiaries um, of whatever sum can be reasonably paid out to them whilst holding sufficient sums to settle any remaining costs and liabilities. <clears throat> At the same time, part of my role is usually to help the beneficiaries who are receiving um, estate assets to just consider whether there are any estate planning options that are available to them um, for how best they might inherit uh, as part of their own wishes or for their own wills and estate planning. Commonly, a deed of variation might be considered to house their inheritance within a trust structure or even to directly pass down the line to, say, their children if they themselves don't wish to receive the, 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 the money. That can be an effective inheritance tax mitigation and preparation, sort of planning um, tool. Um, then obviously it comes to final distributions and dealing with assets. There are a set of standard important procedures to uh, adhere to when dealing with distribution, ensuring that beneficiaries um, have provided correct uh, up-to-date bank statements and bank details that they're properly checked, uh, that the bankruptcy searches are, made, uh, are undertaken because of course an, an executor doesn't want to pay a beneficiary who's bankrupt um, because that might actually come back to the executor if the trustee in bankruptcy cannot recover the sums from the beneficiary. So there's a few little bits and bobs that a lot of people would not normally understand is necessary, uh, but it's an important factor. You don't want to be that one executor in one case where you do pay the wrong person in the wrong way. <clears throat> there may well be future trusts for people who are underage, uh, and not able yet to receive their entitlement. So there are some considerations to how that will be dealt with. And that um, is something, again, we help with with trust management or trust administration until people are of age. Or, of course, if there are discretionary trusts in the will, uh, that is a whole separate process of just uh, managing the efficient uh, uh, distribution of assets to those beneficiaries. Um, as I said, just alluded to, there may be a number of side issues associated with estate administration in terms of our, our role is to look at uh, helping the executors discharge their responsibilities. And part of that is helping the beneficiaries. Um, so how, how their circumstances are then in terms of their own estate planning wills and wishes for, if, for passing the value down successive generations is a really important factor and hopefully something we can really add value to them on. <clears throat> I've lit listed a few examples on this note. Um, and um, yeah, you know, when you're selling a property, uh, there is an optimum way of making sure that all the capital gains and tax allowances are undertaken, uh, are, are, are achieved. So if you've got an estate selling a property and it's gone up in value since the date of death value, there may be a capital gains tax liability. So an executor selling qualifies for one allowance. Um, so the best way to do it is to mem is to prepare a document called a memorandum of appropriation and, and to appropriate, to gift the assets sort of um, without having to formalise that at the land registry um, under a certain notice called a memorandum 
will declare that, say, the three beneficiaries all own the property and therefore all of those beneficiaries will claim their own CGT um, uh, exemption allowances. Now, there are a few bits and bobs that we would look to make sure are explained to our clients and the executors, um, because it really it's their duty to understand a little bit of this or to delegate those functions to us to make sure they're undertaken. Do you have to take up your executorship? There's no requirement for an executor to take up their appointment. Um, however, if they do take steps to take up their appointment, then they have uh, officially taken a role in it. It's called intermeddled, which sounds a bit of a, a negative expression, but it just means that they've, they've taken up part of their role. Um, so if an executor doesn't want to, uh, to do so, they can do one or two things. They can renounce their executorship, which means they have no further involvement at all. They can have something called power reserved to them, which allows them to take up the role if they need to, if they had some concern or wish to suddenly become involved with this signing offs uh, processes. Uh, or they can appoint an attorney such as uh, myself or ourselves here uh, to act for them. Um, if you're nominated as a trustee, you will have to take that appointment up, but you can always retire if you don't want to, uh, to take up that role, um, or again, delegate those responsibilities to someone like our firm, Pro Trust uh, Management, uh, Trust Management. Um, and it is an onerous job being an executor. It is a burden. Um, you do not get paid for it um, unless you are a professional. So who, who undertakes that in the normal course of business. So it is something to bear in mind when you if you're appointing executors. Normally, the people who are appointed who aren't professionals are people who have a stake or interest in the estate. And that means they don't, I suppose, mind so much taking up their role. Um, but of course, it can be anybody who is willing to undertake the, the, the duties. But definitely take advice as executors. Make sure you have uh, undertaken a process of getting advice. It uh, discharges your duties and responsibilities. And an executor may not be prepared for it. Uh, obviously, when someone dies, it's a sudden and shocking experience. And an executor may be unable to dedicate suitable time to take up the role. So delegating is a really important part and I would definitely advise executors to do so. So if you want any more information or would like to just discuss executorship, I'd be delighted to do so. Do take a look on our website for some more uh, information. Um, this is, uh, I hope you can see this, our ProTrust Consulting website. Um, Estate Administration has its own dedicated website with um, a number of notes and guidances um, and advice uh, to, to various uh, aspects of estate administration. Um, so some executive guidance, variation of inheritance tax, completing inheritance tax reforms, uh, forms, and the probate and estate administration process itself. So that has been a bit of a whistle-stop tour of of executorship in a nutshell, um, do uh, let, let us know if you if we can help you in any way. Thanks very much. All the best. Bye.